Yesterday, Bethesda released some news about the next update titled Invaders from Beyond in a dev dive and the Inside the Vault article. There is a lot to unpack here, so let's begin. In the dev dive, Nate Valenta conducted an interview with Fallout 76's senior quest designer, Ellis Tan, and Fallout World's lead, Bo Buchanan. Hey, uh, I'm Ellis. I'm a senior quest designer at Bethesda, and I worked on the Invaders from Beyond event. Hi, I'm Bo Buchanan. I'm the Fallout World's lead at uh, BGS Austin. Nate asks, what can players expect from the new seasonal event, Invaders from Beyond? They can expect a seasonal event similar to Night of the Moth, um, but in addition to that, it's a little bit more of a total world invasion. So this event can take place at six different locations across Appalachia. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have three other existing public events where aliens are going to be taken over. Um, where they usually wouldn't be. Um, and we have a variety of sort of random encounters that you can you can encounter as you're venturing across the world um, that may have some aliens or Brahmins or other things. It is interesting to note that the main event can happen in six different locations on the map. It was also interesting to learn that there are three existing public events where aliens will take them over. All of that and more as we will be getting new random encounters too. Nate then went on to ask, what will we be experiencing during the event? Yes, so first you're going to see a really cool UFO descending over the event area. Um, you're going to see the weather change uh, to sort of a quantum storm. Uh, it'll be blue and, and lightning bolts and everything uh, since there's a disturbance in the atmosphere. Awesome. Um, and there are some brainwave siphons placed in the area by the aliens, which are sort of pulsing and gathering brainwaves from nearby life forms um, and gathering data on them, which obviously nobody gave the, per the aliens permission to do that. Um, so your goal is to sort of fend off the aliens that are teleporting down from the UFO um, and destroy those siphons. Um, and you will also hear a mysterious benefactor who calls himself Homer coming in over the radio to sort of give advice and instructions uh, throughout the event. Um, and as it goes on, the intensity and the difficulty and the chaos will sort of ramp up a little bit as you have uh, different types of aliens coming out to defend their siphons and also missile strikes coming down from the UFO. Ellis gave a high level overview of the event and its progression. It really sounds like it will be a fun event. The next question was what types of enemies will we encounter during the event? Uh, well, we have the base aliens that you already know about, um, but they also can have poison or cryo weapons now. Uh, in addition to them, we have the flying drones, which are sort of a lighter enemy type, um, and the heavy invaders, um, which I think are pretty cool and funny because uh, you have a little Zayton guy at the top sort of like controlling the mecha suit. Um, so if you ever happen to get up close to them and see them, that that's something fun to look at. I think they're, they're cute. Cute and deadly. Yes, cute and deadly. <laughs> it was nice to learn about the new enemies that we will encounter during the event. Next, Ellis was asked about what we can learn about the aliens and what they want. Uh, I feel like the aliens have always been sort of a developer favorite. Uh, we've always wanted to do something with them in 76, so I'm glad that we got the chance to do something big and cool uh, this time around. Um, and what we do know is that they're doing research, right? They're gathering those brainwaves. Um, we don't necessarily know right away why, um, what, what they're going to do with the data that they're gathering. But if you want to know more, uh, there is a way to speak to Homer outside of the event. Um, I won't spoil that since he likes his privacy. Um, but if you want to seek him out, I do suggest uh, seeking out the random encounters um, because there may be something you can get from those that would help you find him. At this point, Ellis began to get cryptic in the responses. 
I don't know if the idea was not to give any spoilers or simply not knowing how to respond. Either way, we didn't get a lot of info and we will have to investigate on our own to get the answers, assuming that they're out there to be found. Nate then asked, how else is Invaders going to affect the game other than the main event? Yeah, um, so there are the random encounters that I've mentioned that can happen across the world. Um, and then there are three other existing public events that the aliens will be taking over. Um, I want y'all to discover what they are, um, so I won't spoil all of them, but uh, I will say that there is definitely something new in Campfire Tales. There is actually a third ending to that event that Ooh. was part of the original design, uh, but at the time we weren't ready to release it. So I'm glad that we are able to release it now uh, because it's a perfect addition to the rest of the Invaders festivities. Ellis reiterated the random encounters and that there are three public events that get invaded by the aliens. While the answer was still cryptic, we did learn one thing this time. Campfire Tales has a third ending that has always been in the game, but was never implemented. This is now being added in this update. It's nice to see previously abandoned things being added in. Hopefully, this will become a trend with other things that were cut from the game in the future. Nate then went on to ask if we are going to continue to see aliens after the event's two-week run. Uh, I would say that these otherworldly beings are a little hard to predict. Um, so anything is possible. Uh, I would uh, encourage y'all to enjoy the festivities while they're around, but our current plan is that they would come back at some point um, for another seasonal event and another seasonal brainwave siphoning. Um, so if you enjoy the event, please let us know. Ellis seemed to struggle with the answer to that question. It seems like they want to add the aliens in on a more regular basis, but the likelihood is that this will only be during the event time frame. The next question asked was about the types of rewards that we can get from this event. Uh, so there's the alien souvenir beer sign, similar to that, that we have for other seasonal events. Uh, we have some other alien themed workshop items like a stash box and uh, an alien in a tube. Um, and we have some new weapons that you can acquire as well. Uh, one is the Electro Enforcer, which is a new melee weapon. Um, and also the Alien Disintegrator, which is a new energy rifle. And those are really cool. We then learn about some of the new weapons that we can earn. Now is it just me, or does the sound effect for the melee weapon sound like a wet fart or what? Let the fart jokes commence in the comments below. <laughs> anyway, Nate asked Ellis if there is any interesting or fun stories that happened while creating the event. Um, I think the funniest stories come from when I was very first implementing it, um, and I was spawning in the alien creatures that we already had like existing in the editor um but we weren't using them for anything so like nobody had had looked at them to make sure that they're functioning properly yet um and so there were a lot of funny bugs with them they would they would get crippled and like lay on the floor um but their hitbox was still standing so you could just shoot at the air above them to hit them um they would run out of ammo after shooting like 10 times and then sort of just stand there not knowing what to do. Um, and then the worst thing was every single one of them was equipped with an alien blaster, uh, which has a very distinct sound effect. Um, so if you can imagine like 20 aliens all in the same area, like pew pewing with their alien blaster at the same time, uh, very cacophonous and that was that was the state of the event for a little while in the beginning it was interesting to hear about the development one thing that i found very interesting was that it sounds like the aliens were never fully developed this is probably why they didn't add them at launch like so many other things the aliens were left in an unfinished state it really is nice to finally see some things being added in that were cut from the game now Nate asked Bo about the player progression in Fallout Worlds. 
Yeah, so when Fallout Worlds was released, um, a lot of players were very interested in it, but hesitant to kind of stop their main progression in the game um, to spend a lot of time in it. So I'm excited to announce um, with this new update, uh, we are going to add the ability to earn score while in a Fallout World. Um, so whether you're playing on your a uh, public world or you're playing on a private custom world with your friends, you will be able to complete the daily and weekly score challenges uh, and earn score. And everything that you do in that world will go and progress your season normally. Uh, we are going to disable one of the score challenges, which is the endlessly repeatable XP reward. Um, that one you'll only be able to do in adventure mode, but all the rest of the daily and weeklies you will be able to complete inside Fallout Worlds. Uh, we think this is a good balance um, for players of being able to still have some progression. A lot of players were um, clamoring for the ability to earn score um, while we look at other things we might be able to do in the future. Um, so hopefully this gives everybody the chance to come and experience it without feeling like they're missing out on all the wonderful things to do in adventure mode. Bo addressed the fact that players were reluctant to play in worlds due to the lack of progression options. He did state that while we will be able to complete daily and weekly challenges, one is being left out, that being the repeatable XP one. This makes sense for now since it could easily be exploited in worlds. Bo did let on that they are exploring other ways to enable progression transfer between adventure and worlds in the future. This is very encouraging as it means we will see more options in the future. Nate went on to ask about the new settings that will be available in Worlds. Yeah, um, we tried to add a couple things for everybody in this update. Um, we added some basic stuff for handling carry weight. So you will be able to increase, decrease, and manipulate uh, the maximum number of things you can carry. Uh, we had some heated conversations internally about how to actually manipulate that. So we ended up with two different settings. One of them that lets you apply a multiplier to your existing uh, max carry weight. That way it kind of increases or decreases the effectiveness of your build. And the other one, if you want more control, you can explicitly state what you want the max carry weight to be of everybody on your server, regardless of what their build is. Um, so if you wanted to set it to 999, you can. If you wanted to set it to 100, you can. Um, after that, we started adding uh, another dismemberment setting. So if you're, you know, if uh, blood going everywhere and chunks of people isn't quite your thing, uh, we added confetti, uh, just like the lunchbox effect uh, that will go off every time something would be would dismember. Um, for our more PvP and survival oriented players, we added the ability to disable uh, legendary and non-legendary perks as well as disabling both of them together so if you'd like to level the playing field or you'd like to just make the game harder you're more than welcome to do that now also we added the ability to disable vats but also to dis disable vats uh, explicitly against players um, one of the things pvp players have been complaining about is they don't want an aim bot just available in the game at all times this should allow them once again to lower the level the playing field a bit awesome and we've also got the object intersection um, setting. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so this one I'm really excited about. Um, we're adding this setting to uh, the existing relaxed building restriction setting. So it'll automatically be part of Happy Builder World whenever it comes back by as a public world. Um, basically, what we did is we got tired of trying to rebuild pieces of Appalachia and, you know, a board sticking up somewhere was getting in your way. You weren't able to place something because it was either intersecting with something in the world or something you'd already placed. So what this does is it up, upgrades the relaxed building restriction setting so that object intersection is no longer a problem. Um, if you weren't able to place something because it intersected with something else, you will now be able to place it as long as you can still select it after you placed it so that you can still delete it and move it and move it around, those kind of things. Um, we've also upgraded the UI a little bit so if you have this setting on, the toggle snapping setting in the UI when you're in the workshop has an extra feature added to it. Now it's more like toggle placement. Uh, it has snapping, it has collide, which basically is the same as snapping on and snapping off. And then we have a new one called free, which attempts to disable even more of the collision with other objects. So hopefully you can get things into more places and kind of line them up exactly how you want them while you're building things, um, whether that's intersecting stuff with your own objects or things already placed in the world. These new settings are going to make things so much more fun in Worlds. 
They really set out to try to please as many players as possible, including the PvP side of the house. My hope is that Worlds will someday be able to satisfy the nuclear winner crowd too. He then asked Bo what his favorite settings are. You know, for me, it's always a good time to turn on the heavy ragdoll and the high jumping and turning off fall damage uh, and just kind of run around and smack things. Nothing, nothing to me is kind of more fun than jumping off really tall things and kind of smacking things to the moon. Gotta love it when they go flying. I, you absolutely do. I was not surprised by his answer to that question since he did say something similar when Worlds was first announced. This was the end of the dev dive and we did get quite a bit of information about the update. That said, there are still many questions yet to be answered so I guess we will have to find out on our own after the update. As we continue with the article, we learn that we are getting bonus challenges starting February 22nd and ending when the update begins on March 1st. That's right, the Invaders from Beyond update launches March 1st. So make sure you claim your rewards from this season's scoreboard before then because once the update starts, you will not be able to claim them anymore. As most, if not all of you know, the Fashnot Day event is going on and will continue until the 22nd. This event is fun and you can get some cool rewards so head over to Helvetia and give it a try. Now, I have one more surprise for you, so sit back, relax, and enjoy this next segment. The opening vistas of space promise high cost as well as high reward. We set sail on this new sea because there is new knowledge to be gained. The exploration of space is one of the great adventures of all time. And we mean to be a part of it. We mean to lead it. That painting is up for grabs and all you have to do to enter is join the constellation. Links for this and everything else we discussed are in the description below. With that, this news episode comes to an end and I want to hear your thoughts. Are you excited about the invaders update? Is there anything you are looking forward to? Sound off in the comments below. If you enjoyed this episode, give a like, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with your friends. It really helps the channel and I appreciate you all. As always, I'm just glad you stopped by and I'll see you in the next one.